Hi, welcome to IT and Automation. Today, I wanted to talk about how you authenticate with Kubernetes cluster using kubectl, and most importantly, that .cube directory. The .cube directory in your home folder, this particular folder here, we are looking at the screen, and we'll talk about this file as well. So this .cube directory in your home folder contains a configuration file or more configuration files. That specifies how kubectl, a Kubernetes command line tool, communicates with Kubernetes cluster. So this is the primary file in the in this directory, and it, this is the config, Common, commonly referred as a kube config. You can point it through the environmental variable file as well. So understanding the kube config file and dot kube directory. Let's look into the structure. So the kubeconfig file is a YAML file, which, as you can see in the screen, that contains several sections, right? like a cluster. So cluster is which cluster of kubec which cluster kubectl can connect to. User is credential for the connecting to the cluster, and context is it combines a cluster and a user into a named context that kubectl can use and current context is which one is the active context so you could have a multiple context in that case it talks about the currently active context context as i said before it is a combination of cluster and a user into a named context that kubectl can use. How authentication works is you have this endpoint for Kubernetes API server and a certificate that base64 encoded certificate that is the identity. So server verifies that and you're authenticated. The user section contains credential um, need to authenticate to the Kubernetes API server these credentials can be certificate it can be token or basic basic authentication but generally you always use the token now let's talk about the ownership um, the ownership matters on dot cube directory when you install likes of say let's give it take an example of micro kts or any other distribution it really doesn't matter it creates and modifies the cube config file in the dot cube directory so it needs to be readable writable by the user who is running that cube ctl changing ownership uh, to ensure the current user has necessary permission you need to change the ownership if the folder is uh, owned or has a different group ownership that's why normally whenever you install uh, some of some packages you'll get an instruction around joining it to the um, joining it or putting the user into the group uh, any any kubernetes package that either it, it, it could be minikube micro um, or the vendor provided generally has a command which outputs the config and then you can put that config into the cube config file and in some cases you can also do minus minus cube config or you can always do uh, if your cube config file is not in default directory you can use minus minus config and that that's how kubectl will use the non-default or non-standard path to communicate with the kubernetes cluster so yeah, that was a quick rundown of kube.cube folder and kubeconfig, which is always essential when communicating with Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, that was that was it. Thank you.